everybody, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to a new favorites video. It's favorites time. I've done these very sporadically over the year, but um, I have enjoyed doing them nonetheless. So we have an October favorites today because who doesn't love the month of October? Also can't believe that it's nearly over. That's just what, Halloween's next week. But I am feeling, I'm feeling very excited for this time of year. We've got Halloween, we've got bonfire night. Christmas is coming, obviously. I'm not gonna say that too loudly, but uh, yeah, love this time of year, as I'm sure is universally shared out there. And uh, yeah, I have a couple of favorites to talk through, some um, fashion bits, some beauty as usual, some other things. And then also I thought I would throw in a little book haul at the end. They are all sitting here behind me. Oh, there's actually one missing. Let's just pop that on the top. Um, yeah, I've been buying some books recently, so I thought I would just have a little chat through of those for you guys and do a book haul. So um, I'm gonna leave that to the end of the video and I'm gonna crack on with my favorites first. So let's start off with some fashion bits and style things. And actually one of my favorite things that I've been wearing this month is what I'm wearing now, this jumper, which says, as you can probably read, knockers. So obviously this is a really amazing, like cozy, gray, sweat jumper. Um, I absolutely love it, but it's also for a really good cause because it's part of the Girl Vs Cancer charity t-shirts and jumpers. If you haven't heard of Girl Vs Cancer, it's a really inspiring charity that was started by Lauren. Her story is probably the most inspiring part of the whole thing and it's really woven in to the brand that she's created. She wanted to give back and then she started um, printing t-shirts and it's kind of just evolved and now this is where we are for autumn and I just love the whole story behind it what she's doing is amazing and a portion of all the proceeds go and are split up between various breast cancer charities uh yeah so I feel like this is the best of both worlds because it's an amazing jumper and also it's for a really great cause so I wanted to mention that in the favorites today another staple for me this month as you probably have seen me wear repeatedly are white jeans. I know there's a thing about wearing white jeans past Labor Day. I don't really know what Labor Day is because we don't have that here in the UK, but white it is. Uh, I think this is gonna be, other than black, my staple jean color for autumn and winter. I just really like the way it looks with a lot of the autumnal colors that are around at the moment. I've definitely been reaching for a pair of white jeans over uh, my normal kind of light blue denim wash. And yeah, these are actually my favorites. I can't believe how much of an amazing bargain these are. These are from H&M and they are the Vintage Slim Ankle High Waisted Jeans. So they are basically not skinny skinny, but they are slim fit, very high waisted, really flattering. The only thing that's slightly off about these is that they have a button fly, which I have to say I'm just kind of used to now. Other than that, they are the perfect, perfect jean. And I'm guessing they do these in all sorts of washes and colors, but for me, it's been this white pair. I have just worn them with everything. I think they're really flattering. I only actually have one pair and I have yet to spill on them, which I'm, I'm very proud of. So those have definitely been a favorite of mine. So obviously one of the more exciting parts of getting back into autumn and winter is that we can wear coats again. It's definitely been coat weather. It's so nice and sunny here at the moment. You can probably see the sun is like blinding me right now. It's glaring through a window. But this is my favorite kind of weather, especially around this time of year when it's chilly and you can wrap up and wear layers, but it's also really nice and sunny. So um, I do have a coat favorite from the month and I'm a little bit in love with this, a little bit obsessed. I want to hug it and wear it forever. Um, but this is a teddy coat. This is one that I picked up at the beginning of the month and I really have been enjoying wearing this. This is actually from Pieces and it's kind of like a bikerish style. It's a slightly shorter jacket but it also reminds me of a bomber too. It's got this nice kind of thick collar to it which actually has a little leather detail. I really like the leather details that this coat has. You can kind of see it on the poppers here and at the bottom there. Kind of just breaks up the uh, the teddiness of it and gives it a little bit more of an edge to it so it's not just um, this kind of big Borg teddy coat. The teddy is kind of small, it's not the fluffiest of fluffy ones that I've seen. But the thing I love about this, I think the most, is just the color. It's this gorgeous orange, rusty shade, which I'm so into right now. This is everything that I want to wear. So one of the things that I have probably had the most questions about this month on my Instagram and various places is this bag. This uh, beautiful, beautiful thing is definitely me getting a lot of attention from all of you and I do not blame you because it's actually something that I've been trying to track down for a really long time. Uh, so this is the Emily bag. I think it's the larger size from the Couples. 
Um, I've been after a kind of snakeskin python-y style bag for a really long time. This style of bag from the Coopers has been around for quite a while. I think it's a collaboration with Emily Ratajkowski um, because it is called the Emily bag and it's a really gorgeous kind of like little satchel style envelope bag with a little clasp, opens up like this, has a top handle as well as a long strap. I actually really love how chunky this strap is and the little gold hardware on it makes it kind of a little bit more interesting. It's kind of skinny and then fat at the top. So the actual style of the bag I've really loved for a long time. And then I think this season or maybe last season they brought out the snake print versions. I think there's a couple of different animal prints. Maybe they do a leopard. And this also comes in various different colors. So there's a red snake print, there's an orangey one. Obviously me being me wanted the very plain neutral kind of grayish brown color. I originally wanted to go for the smaller size, which is more of a square, um, but I'm so happy I went for the bigger one. This is the perfect size kind of everyday take with you bag. I'm not gonna go too much into what's inside because this is not a what's in my bag video, but it fits a lot of stuff. There's various different pockets. I actually have a book in here. Lots of room, lots of space, lots of compartments. And I thought this being quite a statement bag, it would be quite difficult to pair with outfits, but honestly it's gone with literally every single outfit that I've worn this month. And that's definitely something that I'm trying to think about more with purchases now, things that are slightly more capsule like things that all work together and I'm surprised at how much wear I've got out of this. I knew I would love it but it really has just been grabbed every single day for me now and I'm so so happy I managed to get hold of one of these. Emily you are my favourite favourite thing right now. Okay let's move on to a few beauty bits. I'm actually going to start with a candle um, because we all love a candle especially this time of year. It's only recently that I've started burning them again and I've really missed just having a candle on. It's a nice cozy vibe you know I enjoy it. So this is one that I actually bought quite recently, but I've gone through so much of it because I've just been putting this on every single day. I've been putting this on just for an hour or an hour and a half because I didn't want to go through it, but this is a diptyque candle and diptyque candles are so strong. They do really scent your entire house just by burning them for a short amount of time. This is one that I hadn't seen or heard of before. It's called Ben Juan, and I would describe this as smelling somewhere in between the perfect woody fireside autumn candle that's kind of spicy and musky and amazing and also kind of like a really attractive smelling man. That is what I get from this. I know that's probably quite weird but it smells kind of a little bit like a, a spicy leathery sort of aftershave but really really warm. I absolutely love this. I'd say it's kind of like the sister version of Feu de Bois. If that's a little bit too intense and too smoky and woody for you. This is probably gonna be the slightly lighter side of that, um, but it's so delicious, it's so gorgeous. And yeah, I think I might have to get another one because I'm gonna be out of this one soon and I, I don't want that to happen. So as you might have been able to tell, my hair is a little bit different in this video. I don't know if it's that different really. It never really changes that much, but um, yeah, I recently had it recolored and it's gone. It's got a little bit ashier, a little bit more brown. Josh, my hairdresser, and myself sat down and had a big discussion about what I was gonna do with it. He wanted me to go pink. I wanted to go dark, dark brown. I think we settled somewhere in the middle of just kind of like toning the blonde a bit. The reason I mentioned that is that I've been trying to be a little bit kinder and gentler to my hair. It had been a long, long time since I'd had it cut, so it was getting very brittle and dry, and it's still a little bit dry now because it's obviously very overprocessed. But I've really been kind of making a conscious effort to take better care of it recently. One of the main things I've stopped doing is washing my hair as much. And it may sound slightly concerning to some of you, but I have been washing my hair under the shower. Um, but instead of using shampoo, I've just kind of been really massaging my scalp. And I think that's really all you need. I do wash it once a week with a cleansing conditioner, but I've been really trying to kind of stay away from shampoo and really foamy things that are just gonna strip it and dry it. So I'll let you know how that goes. Right now it feels very kind of voluminous and, and nice. So other than the one product that I use in the shower, I've also been trying some new bits from a very exciting brand that has just reached the UK, which is Kirsten S. Kristen or Kirsten S is a hairstylist from the US. Her Instagram is 
just hair girls, it's amazing. But she brought out a range probably quite a while ago. It's only just come to us here in the UK. It's on Feel Unique now. And I wanted to pick up a few bits. I grabbed leave-in conditioner. Some leave-in conditioners can feel very much like you have just left conditioner in your hair and forgotten to wash it out, which is never a good thing. But this one is so, so light. I don't even notice that it's there. It does help me to kind of brush through my hair and keep it soft, but it doesn't weigh it down, which is always what I'm looking for. So I really like that one. And then also probably my hair care staple at the moment is an air drying product so I've talked a lot about the way air drying foam which to me is just holy grail it takes my hair from a frizzy mess to just nice and naturally waved and smooth just by putting in one product and doing nothing else so I really wanted to try the Kirsten S air dry cream because I thought it'd be a little bit more hydrating because it is a cream and not a foam I think this is definitely going to be better if you have um, slightly thicker or drier hair because it is a lot lot more hydrating but it kind of does the same thing it just lets your hair dry into sort of depending obviously what your natural hair texture is mine is kind of flat but a little bit waved but only if you really try and get it out but it really kind of does bring out that natural wave which I, I like a lot and it takes away every inch of frizz especially for me having a lot of bleach in my hair that is amazing because if I do let it dry completely on its own it's just gonna be out to here uh yeah so I've enjoyed that one as well another brand that actually made their way over to the UK recently or in fact just this month are Drunk Elephant now I have tried a couple of bits um, from Drunk Elephant by ordering them from Sephora. But now they're all here and we can play with them, it's very exciting. Um, I've been giving most of the range a go. I got sent an amazing package from Cole Beauty, thank you very much guys. And to me, uh, I think this is probably the standout. If I was gonna recommend you buy one thing from the bits that are available here in the UK now, I would go for this. It's the Virgin Marula Face Oil. I love a face oil, I'm never without it. I've actually started using um, a facial oil in the day as well as in the evening just because my skin's been getting a lot drier now It's a bit cooler outside. This is an interesting one because it's very light and you can put a lot of this on without feeling greasy and weighed down and heavy and yet it is Super super hydrating. It's not one of those oils that kind of just feels like you haven't really put any on and just sinks in straight away It's the perfect combination of hydrating and wearable. That's what I would say. I also think the color coordinated uh, Packaging that Drunk Elephant do is just so cute and amazing Amazing and I, I really like it. And then makeup wise, I really haven't changed a lot in my routine for the last couple of weeks, but I have been really enjoying a new foundation. And yes, this is a foundation. This is not a tinted moisturizer. It's a very different type of foundation though. It's from Clarins and it's called the Skin Illusion, the Skin Illusion Natural Hydrating Foundation. Um, it kind of looks a little bit like a face oil. It has a little pipette. This has SPF 15 in it as well. And to me, this is just a very versatile kind of product. It does have a lot of coverage to it, but only if you wanted to. It just sort of buffs into the skin and looks so seamless and flawless. I've been using a buffing brush to apply this. I don't think it works as well with a sponge. So I've definitely been reaching for my Real Techniques buffing brush. For this one you can put a lot on or you can literally put one teeny tiny drop and that's probably what I've been doing most days just getting a really nice even but natural base but if I'm going out if I want my skin to look really flawless and clean and fresh this can do amazing amazing things and it still looks like skin it's still got a very radiant finish it's not dewy and sticky but it has a really gorgeous radiant glow so I have been really really enjoying this I think it's a great product considering I don't usually love or reach for that many Clarins base products I am super super into this so now that that's all out of the way let's move on to this happy little pile maybe not that one I just love a fresh new pile of books um, these are ones that I've picked up over the last month or so and I'm actually going to start with the one that was inside my handbag because this is the one that I'm currently reading at the moment. I think I've got a few chapters in. This is called The Memory Shop. It's by Ella Griffin. This is basically about a woman who returns back to her childhood town in Dublin, so it is set in Ireland. She has inherited a ton of stuff from her grandma, um, some really interesting like antiques and things like that, and everything kind of has a little bit of a story behind it. So far, it's definitely a very kind of, uh, I wouldn't say super lighthearted read, but it's just kind of nice and easy. I actually read the start of this on the train the other day and uh, it kind of pulled me in quite quickly so I think it's just going to be one of those nice easy kind of things which 
I think from time to time we all need. I might just keep this one and um, come back to it when I'm reading some other bits if I need a little bit of a break. So next, which is another one that I probably should have started reading first because I really want to go and see the movie of this. Uh, but this is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I'm sure you guys have heard all about this. Um, I think the book and the film are supposed to be quite uh, similar. Maybe there's a little bit more in the book, a bit more detailed as usual in terms of the storylines and backgrounds and things like that. But um, me being me, I have to read the book first. So um, yeah, it's supposed to be kind of funny, hilarious, really interesting, a little bit like Gossip Girl set in Singapore, which is, is definitely a little bit of me. So yeah, I will get around to reading that one probably next. A bit more of a, a chunky one. I think I'm gonna have to find the right time to get into this, not only because of the length of it, but because of the subject matter. I actually mentioned this one on Instagram and so many of you, I had hundreds and hundreds of messages telling me how sad this book is, but worth the read. That was definitely the resounding point. It's gonna change your life. It's gonna make you bawl your eyes out, but it's gonna be worth it. This is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Kind of, I think it basically follows uh, four, I think it's four men who went to either college or university together. It kind of follows their lives and how they intertwine and just them growing up. And I think it's probably set over quite a long period of time. Um, this is one that I've always wanted to read. So it will no doubt probably sit on my shelf for years and years and years before I end up picking it up. But I will read this. I feel like it's something that I really, really want to do. Next, we have uh, actually a non-fiction one. This is why social media is ruining your life. Obviously, I have a job that revolves around social media. So I thought this would be interesting and potentially necessary to read. So it's by Catherine Omerod. Um, it's actually got a little recommendation by Emma Gannon on here, which always fills me with confidence when it comes to nonfiction books. And um, there's a lot of discussion most of the time, but definitely right now around social media and the influence of it and the kind of polishing of people's lives and showing things that aren't necessarily the whole picture. Um, I'm sure we're all very aware of it, but I thought this would be a really interesting thing to read about. Hopefully something that I can take a lot from and something that's gonna benefit me seeing as this is what I do. So that's gonna be an interesting one for sure. This is a very, very heavy book. I don't often buy a hardback. I'm definitely more into my paperbacks, but um, yeah, I really wanted to read this. I've never read a Murakami before, so I don't actually know what I'm in for. I know I'm in for something, but this I think is his newest. I think this is most recently published. It's called, it's called Killing Commodore and um, it sounded really interesting to me. It's about a 30-something year old portrait painter in Tokyo. Obviously, I think most of Murakami's stories are set in Tokyo, which I really like because it's probably the one city that I find the most interesting in the world, one that I would love to visit someday. He's an artist, he gets abandoned by his wife and has to go on a kind of exploration of himself and also other things. It sounds like a kind of fantasy adventure, but it's probably got some very profound meaning behind it. So again, this is gonna be a big one to get into, but it sounds a little bit magical and a bit fun and perfect for this time of year. And then I think the rest of these two are non-fiction books. The first is Lily Allen's Autobiography. Yeah, this is Autobiography. It's called My Thoughts Exactly. I saw Lily Allen on something. She was talking about this book. And I just thought I would give it a read. She sounded, or she sounds like she has had a very interesting life. Um, and I also really liked the cover of the book. Aesthetically pleasing, what can I say? I definitely judge a book by its cover. Um, I don't read a lot of biographies or autobiographies at all. If I do, they're usually historical ones. But I thought I'd give Lily a go, why not? I think a lot of people have picked this up recently and um, have definitely said some things about it. So I'm interested to give that a read. And then the final book I have is maybe one that I am super excited to dig into. This is actually a cookbook and it is called Vegan Christmas. It's by Gaz Oakley, who is also known as the avant-garde vegan. I think that might be his Instagram. I haven't actually come across him before. I've been thinking a lot about what I'm doing this Christmas because I haven't yet had a vegan Christmas. And like with how I approach it in general, day to day, I wouldn't call myself a vegan, but I definitely eat mostly plant-based. If I do eat something that isn't, I don't beat myself up about it. I think it's better to just eat less animal products and do the best that you can. But it's something that I'm definitely very passionate about and I really have enjoyed it. I think it's been since January when I did Veganuary that I've really been thinking a lot about it. And yeah, I think there are some incredible looking things in here. Look, 
no pigs in blankets, these are vegan pigs in blankets, um, which is something that I can't even eat as a vegetarian. I'm excited to maybe give those a go. A lot of these things I would say sound like they have a very difficult recipe. There are tons and tons of ingredients in most of these, which usually I like to keep things simple and not buy really strange random ingredients that I'm never gonna use again. But I think when it comes to Christmas, it is just that one day and it's a bit more special. So I'm definitely gonna look into making a few of these. I might do some practice runs beforehand and see how they turn out. But I think that's gonna be a really handy one to have this Christmas. So guys, that is my October favorites and mini book haul. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you uh, for watching this. As always, everything will be linked down below for you guys in the info box, along with what I'm wearing, my makeup, because I know you always have a question about something like that. So yeah, I think that is everything for me today. I hope you guys are having an amazing start to the week and I will see you all soon. Bye.